Hi guys, we are on week two, spring, and um, today we're gonna do a lesson about DIY, do-it-yourself organic pest control. So we know from last week we talked about the good guys and the bad guys that you'll see in a garden ecosystem, and it's really normal to see all sorts of different types of life. There's, there are even those that are microscopic that we would need a microscope to see, and then there are those that we can see with our eyes. So it's really important when you're gardening to recognize and keep that healthy balance of your good guys and a minimal balance or a minimal amount of those bad guys. So when we're talking about fresh produce, I would ask you guys if you knew what the term organic means. And what organic really means is to grow without the use of chemical or synthetic, like fake pesticides. And these toxic pesticides are designed to keep those bugs away from eating the outside of the fruit. But it can also harm the humans who are eating those fruits and vegetables. And those chemicals soak into our ground, gets into our groundwater, and just overall is really bad for the environment. So in an organic garden, it's really common that those good guys will step in and control the population. But sometimes when the bad guys do take over, then you do have to step in. So let's see. I'm gonna go over with you guys some methods that we use in our home garden and um, are really recommended if you would like to grow your food organically and make it as healthy as it possibly can be for those who are eating the food. So one of the ways that you can do it is actually just to manually remove the pests. So if you see those caterpillars, you can even have like a cup of soapy water, remove them, put them in the cup of soapy water and get rid of them later. Another way that you can get rid of those, um, those bad guys is actually just pruning or trimming away part of the plant. A lot of times those pests will kind of colonize or they'll form in a group together and you can just remove the parts of the plant that they've really affected and the rest of the plant will be okay. Another thing you can do is companion planting. Now we've talked a lot about companion planting over the years, but certain plants that you plant together can really protect your fruit and vegetable plant plants. For example, what do I have here? The mint family. So anything from the mint family. So mint, basil, rosemary, oregano, thyme, sage, those are really good, great, actually those are great companion plants because they deter a lot of the bad guys. Um, anything from the allium family, so we've got garlic, onion, shallots, and then, um, yeah, and also flowers. You guys know the flower power. So things like marigolds or calendula or zinnias, those will really deter, they don't like the scent of those flowers, so they will, those will help deter a lot of your bad guys. Um, so let's see that you have tried manually removing, you have tried pruning away. I always say that if you, if I have a whole plant and if I've pruned away a third of the plant trying to get rid of the pest and I still have an issue, then I would step in and use a soap spray. So the soap that you wanna use is just a really mild plant-based soap called Castile soap. Um, Dr. Bromer's is a really good one that you can get anywhere on Amazon, on Target. But um, you just mix a really small amount, they have the, the directions on the bottle, with water. And instead of spraying your entire plant, just spray the parts of their plant that have been affected by the pest. So they're soap spray. And then, talking about our good guys and our bad guys, another organic method that you could use to control the bad guys, get some ladybugs. Ladybugs love to feed on aphids. And it's actually not the ladybugs or lady beetles themselves, but they'll lay their eggs and their larvae love to feed on the aphids. So that's a really good way to control your bad guy population. And then the last thing is just a trick that we use at our home. If you have a lot of roly polies or sow bugs or pill bugs, whatever you call them, we'll take orange halves. So at night, we take an orange, we cut it in half, we put it in the soil, near, especially near some of our smaller plants that can really get affected by a roly poly. We put it face down or cut side down and in the morning when we pull it up and all those roly polies are attracted to the sugar and the sweetness of the fruit, just scrape them off into the trash. So that's a way that you can organically control that population as well. So that is it. The only other thing that I would probably follow up, this is a book that I love called Spring After Spring. And it's about how a woman named Rachel Carson really brought a lot of attention within the science community and brought the attention to the government about how dangerous these um, harmful pesticides that were being used by large companies, what that was doing to the environment. And she started the whole movement to put restrictions on these companies to make them more aware of what sort of chemicals they were using on their fruits and vegetables and basically putting out into the environment. 
So just a reminder, um, do what you can to just be environmentally responsible. If you are gonna use some sort of spray, then make sure that it's one that's not going to be harmful for you when you eat that fruit and vegetable. And also just putting some of those um, dangerous chemicals into our soil and just back into the environment. So have a great day, you guys. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, since we've been learning about pollinators and how much they love to drink nectar, I just wanted to show you a really quick and easy recipe you can make at home that's also a great source of vitamin C. So all you need are your tools. You need some sort of watering pitcher, a measuring cup, a hand juicer, a knife, and a cutting board. And then your ingredients are just water, lemons, and agave nectar. And you could also use maple syrup. So what I'm gonna do is I have four cups of water. I'm gonna add, I squeeze this ahead of time. It took me about three and a half lemons. I'm gonna add one cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice. And then I'm gonna add one third cup of agave nectar. And this agave nectar is kind of dark, I think because it's raw agave nectar, it's not usually this dark. And I forgot a spoon, so I'm gonna mix it with my knife. And there you go. So if you wanna make more, double the recipe, um, double the ingredients, and if you wanna make less, just cut the ingredients in half. Have a good day, guys. How is it? That must mean good. <laughs>